a bunch of new special promos were revealed and within these new set of promos there are a couple of very interesting and potentially clan divining cards so let's go over them and see what they have in store for us Hey Carvados, welcome to a special edition of Carvados Update as today Bushiro dropped a new video on their YouTube channel where they revealed a brand new set of promos as they revealed the Special Fight Pack Volume 8 promos. And for anybody that isn't familiar with the term Special Fight Pack promos, these are special promos that are given to players that are participating in monthly tournaments in their local game shops. And we see this every so couple of sets when they introduce a new volume of these promos and typically for every entrance you get a special sealed pack which includes two of the random promos in that set and every special fight pack the volume has eight different promos and you have a chance to get two of them for each time you participate in a monthly shop tournament of course there are two disclaimers about these specific reveals is that one these cards are currently only in japan but we typically get these special fight pack promos as well but only a couple of months afterwards as we are also needing to catch up with the regular releases of the normal sets so that's why i'm tackling these promos unlike your normal random promos that are from magazines because the chance that we're going to get these promos is very very high and the second disclaimer is of course it might be a little bit harder to get these specific promos because of the whole cancellation of monthly shop tournaments but this specific special fight pack volume is probably gonna be released the moment after this whole mess is cleared up so there might not be actual delays around this specific set so with that out of the way let's discuss about these new promos as we're going to get promos for clans that are going to get support within the next stage booster set but also for the clans that will get support right after that with support for clans like Ling Joker, Oracle Think Tank and even Kegaro. So without further ado, let's jump right into these promos and I'm going to do them in order of what I think is going to be the least significant to the best promo within this specific pack. And we're going to start off with none other than a Royal Paladin promo as we have Discrete 2 Esperance Arrow Dragon. And its ability is Auto Rigger Circle when placed other than from hand until the end of turn this unit gets power plus 5k and boost so there are two things about this card first off its condition means that it needs to be superior called from tech and luckily a lot of royal paddling cards allow for this a good example is of course liverot of course the weaker version Mif Contour of mithril but also the new alt mal but with that said, the trial deck normal alt mount doesn't interact with this card because that one fetches them to hand so you can call them from hand. This one doesn't really work that way. Also specific cards that allows you to draw and then superior call from hand also don't interact with this card very well like Lucius for example. But with that said, I don't think this card is really that special as it just gets a generic plus 5k power boost and of course it gets the boost but it doesn't really matter at all, especially with the new upcoming alt mouth strategy, as that specific build is going to give all your grade 2s boost anyway, thanks to Starlight Violinist that gives every grade 2 boost. And the 5k power isn't all that special as well, as a lot of grade 2s can get an additional 5k power buff. So I think this isn't really that useful for the upcoming alt mouth strategy, but it could maybe be used in different decks that don't utilize the alt mouth engine and don't really play... Starlight Violinist so they get more value at the fact that this card also can attain boost. Then next up we've got a new Oracle Think Tank promo and it's a brand new Battle Sister as we have this grade 1 Battle Sister Kasata and her ability is Adon Rigger Circle once per turn when your drive checks reveals a trigger unit this unit gets power plus 10k until the end of turn. This is nothing new for Oracle Think Tank. We've seen this with the latest iterations with the Tsukiyomi support, as well as the Magus within a support like Panamagus, for example, and Fusilini Magus. This is basically the exact same skill as Fusilini Magus, but that was a grade two. So it's a different version of Panamagus. In some regards, this could be stronger than a Panamagus as when you only drive check one trigger, it will gain 10k and Panamagus only a 5k, but once you get two triggers, it's the exact same, and once you get more than two triggers, then it's very obvious that Panamagus will get better. 
Overall, it could be an interesting addition to the different builds. It probably won't be run in Megas as you want to play more Megas cards. But in the generic sense of Oracle Think Tank, this could be a solid booster. As in most builds, you're not very likely to dry check more than two cards. So not more than two triggers. And only in the Megas deck are you going to go over the triple drive. So meaning this could be a solid support card for Oracle Think Tank in a generic sense. And with the new brand new support coming our way, we could get more battle system support, which could make this card better if there is some kind of underlying battle system synergy going to happen in the future. But that is just speculation for another time. And then followed up, we got another Royal Palin promo because why not? And that's yet again another grade two, and that is Knight of Grand Scheme Deckness. And its ability is Auto Rigor Circle at the beginning of your main phase. This unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. Then if you have no face of cards in your damage zone, counter charge one. So this is a generic 15k beater and it could give you free counter charges out of nowhere. And it can be used in any deck as it's super generic. That's a warm welcome for Royal Pallon as they get finally a counter charger that isn't Blaster Blade restricted. So this could be a very solid promo for anybody out there that's playing Royal Pallon. However, there is a underlining problem with this card, and that's the fact that it needs to be on the field for an entire turn to benefit from its skill. Meaning, the turn that you play it, it's pretty much a 10k vanilla does nothing. And if we're up against control, which we currently are in a very control heavy meta, as we have Narukami running around, Shadow Paladin can retire stuff, Aqua Force has spot removal, and now with the new Gear Chronicle that's also getting spot removal, and we have Angel Feathers that have spot removal, it's very likely that this card will not survive the next turn, making its skill very underwhelming at the current stage of the game. However, with that said, once we strive away from control, this card could actually be very useful. But besides that, Royal Paladin has a specific support card that can somewhat cheat this card out. As we have, of course, Knight of Exemplary Sword, Lucius. And that is somewhat in a similar vein as we talked about some combos within Gold Pattern with Garmore, is that using Lucius, it's still not your main phase. Meaning, you can ride up to your grid free during the right phase, activate Lucius, and then Superior Call Deckness during the right phase. Meaning, it's on the field, you enter your main phase, and bam! It's a 15k, and you just counter charged. That's a solid combo that could work in a lot of different Royal Paladin builds. So there are plays for Deckness and it could be a very solid Royal Paladin support card. So unlike Esperance Arrow Dragon, this card might actually find its way in some builds. Then we got another interesting promo, which is a new grade one for Link Joker, which is Dual Blades of Unnatural Death, Execrete. And Execrete's ability is auto rigor circle one place if your opponent's vanguard is grade 3 or greater, cause Soldiers 1 and look at the 7 cards from the top of your deck, put up to one grade 3 or greater card from among them on the rearguard circle as locked card and shuffle your deck. So this is basically yet another lock your own stuff and it's a pseudo plus 1 that is delayed until the next turn. And unlike most of these lock yourself cards, you have more control of what you're going to lock because you know if you lock something it's either a grade 3 or a grade 4 of Link Joker. Meaning there is less chance of accidentally randomly locking grade zeros or useless cards. And at the same time it filters your deck. But in the generic sense for Link Joker it's not a very useful skill as for one Link Joker doesn't really have a lot of useful rear guard grade 3s that are very potent. And of course besides Messiah there isn't really an archetype that can benefit off these lock cards and get more value out of them. So it's very odd to see how this card is gonna help Link Joker. I would have liked if the card didn't have the restriction that your opponent needs to be a great free. Meaning if you place this thing on turn 1, you could lock a great free. And then once you go into your grade 2 turn, you can unlock, you have then unlocked it. And it means you cheat out the great free a turn earlier, meaning you have some bigger beat sticks. It wouldn't be overpowered because it still has some resources attached to it. It still is somewhat RNG. If you don't hit a grade 3 in the top 7, it doesn't really do anything. But sadly, that's not the case. But just like the Battle Sister Oracle Think Tank promo, we still are going to get more Link Joker support after the next stage booster set. So maybe this card interacts with that support as well. So we have to wait and see if we get more Messiah support. Or maybe 
we get the return of Star Vaders or something like that in a vein that synergize more with lock cards on their own field. So we have to wait to see what the support card's going to do as either this card could really do nothing or it could actually be a very useful tool. Then next up, we've got a brand new Grade 1 Musketeer for Neo Nectar and that is Gerbera Musketeer Paulette. And Paulette's ability is continuous on record circle. During the battle that it boosted a token unit whose original power is 10k or more, this unit gets power plus 10k. So this could combine with the token generate an 18k booster and if it's a 10k base power token that's a 28k column or higher because it needs to be a 10k power or more. That is a solid number you're gener generating for free but there are some inherent problems with this specific card. One, it's a musketeer, which you would then assume it would be good for the musketeer archetype. But the musketeer archetype can only generate normal 5k plant tokens, meaning this card cannot work with the musketeer engine, which is a sad thing to think about. But then we can look at two directions. We have Arboros Dragon, which generates 10k tokens, which this card could synergize with, and it could actually make some very solid lanes for Arboros Dragon, which could be a good support card for Arboros Dragon. But then, because the card states a token unit and not specifically a plant token, and it needs to be of power 10k or higher, then you start thinking about well, we got the Asha Flower Fairy token, right? Which is a 13k base power unit on the original power. Yes. But the problem is that card can be boosted, but there is no use to boost it for power because the power will always be the same as the Vanguard's power that on the point that it is attacking. Meaning the fact that the booster gains an additional 10k power means absolutely nothing. So currently this card can only be utilized in a Boris Dragon. But that said, because this card states a token unit, means it's somewhat future-proofing itself. If we're going to get newer tokens with higher base power or at least 10k or higher, this card could synergize with those tokens and the fact that it becomes a solid 18k booster for free is pretty nice. So right now, with the support that we got and with the cards revealed for Neo Nectar at this specific moment, this card looks really, really bad. But with the potential future support and future-proofing of this specific card, this could actually be a very useful promo that might find its way in future builds later down the line. So don't just write this card off just yet. But now we're going to go into the big three of these new card reveals and the main reason why we're making this video as we have three new promos that are pretty damn useful and have a lot of potential. And we start off of course with your boy's favorite clan as we have this new grade 2 for Gear Chronicle which is Mono Module Dragon. And I definitely like the artwork as it has some kind of Merry Block and Metal Party Dragon vibe as it's somewhat of a toy-ish dragon and it just looks goofy which is always pretty cute. And its ability is strangely enough somewhat useful and has a potential as its ability is auto breaker circle when your Vanguard is placed, this unit gets power plus 5k until the end of turn. Then, if your Vanguard is grade 4, cause counter plus 1 and this unit gets a critical plus 1 until the end of turn. So this card is basically a free 15k unit that can potentially get an additional crit. This really synergizes with how Gear Conical works, as unlike the grade 2 for Royal Pen that needs to wait until the next turn to get the additional power, this will always synergize with Gear Chronicle thanks to the pseudo stride and superior right mechanic as you can place this thing on normal in your main phase, then activate the superior right skill and you ride a new grade 4 on your Vanguard and this will be turned into a 15k beater and you can then count as one if you want to to give an extra crit, which is overall nice. But if you call this thing in the early game during your grade 2 turn and you ride up to grade 3, it will gain an additional 5k power and then when you superior right it will gain another additional 5k power as it isn't a once per turn, meaning it's then a 20k Peter. And also, if Chrono Dragon next stage is gonna do the superior ride back into your Vanguard Grade 3 Chrono Jet, then this unit will then get an additional 5k, making it a 25k Peter on the very first Grade 3 turn, 
which is a very solid thing to do. This card has a lot of potential to get free power and the fact that you can give it a crit if you want to to have more rearguard pressure which then allows you to play force one with high columns and potential free crits or go wide with force two and have potential free crit attacks every single turn. So I honestly think that this grade two has a lot of potential especially with next stage around the corner if that does the rewrite then this could actually be a very solid grade two option for a specific build and just having a random extra crit is always nice in the situation where you're running out of crit triggers or you just want to push out that extra pressure especially in the early game because if you're going on to your very first grade three turn and you're going to pseudo right stride then having all your attacks coming in with crits is all the more important as that means you're gonna force your opponent to waste a lot of cards from hand or at least put them to five damage as soon as possible which is very important for gear chronicle and when you then start swinging in with strong great fours and with the extra brand new retire effects that we're going to get then it starts to get really nasty for your opponent and then things start to look very bright for gear chronicle Followed up with the Gear Chronicle promo, we got a brand new DP promo, which is this great one, Twin Order. And its ability is other rigor circle. When it boosts, one of your Vanguard gets power plus 10k until the end of turn for each of your force markers. And this ability is pretty damn good, as it allows DP to go for force 2 and always get extra powers so they can go for force two and not necessarily rely on die liner's ability to hit a great free to get the extra power and pressure to potentially then go into a diusha which is honestly a very good thing but of course you can also still go for force one and attain insane amount of power and the great thing about this card is that it can be a vanguard booster which then allows you to generate a very strong mid column attack and it would be your first attack as always but its ability can stack in the fact that you can have multiple columns boosted by this specific unit and then attack multiple times with those units and in keep increasing your Vanguard's power until it's crazy high and then do its thing. So there are a lot of options with this specific promo that allows DP to have way more lines of play than just a generic power up the Vanguard. Go for Force 1 in most cases or go for Force 2 and pray to the gods you hit die liner and then go into ultimate great Dayusha. With this great one, you have way more options and way more potential to increase your power, potential of your Vanguard, and hit your ultimate great Dayusha's condition a lot more easier and a lot more consistent, which allows you to afford to do different plays and also potentially run different cards as you, uh, as you have now other cards that can substitute for the power increase. And at the same time, it also allows you to put your force markers on the rearguard circle. So if you still go for force one, you aren't necessarily forced to put them always on your Vanguard. You can just now put them onto the sideline and still gain the same value of the Force Marker as this Grade 1 basically gives the Vanguard the additional 10k which you would get from the Force 1. So we get the pseudo Spike Brothers effect where we can pass through our Force Marker from unit to unit thanks to this Grade 1. Only it's of course from the rear guard to the Vanguard if you happen to put your Force Markers on the sidelines. So overall, a pretty nice promo that allows DP to have more options to play around and not really necessarily be forced to play one specific strategy and keep to that strategy to allow them to attain victory. And then finally, we've got the last promo of the set that is, in my opinion, probably the most potential promo of this set and has the most options and can mean a lot for the clan and that's surprisingly a Kagero promo as we have this great to burn rise dragon and its ability is auto rigor circle when your vanguard stands due to your card's ability cost count them as one and discard a card from your hand and this unit gets power plus 15k critical plus one until the end of turn this is basically a great support card for overlord in standard as it allows you to capitalize on the restanding effects of overlord overlord the great and overlord the end and finally get some actual rearguard pressure which is kagero's main weakness you could say and now you can finally have a rearguard that can beat in for high as it can become a 25k beater with a crit 
means not, not only your Vanguard is going to swing in with pressure, your rearguards now finally will do as well. And the fact how the end works, this is actually a nice support card for the end, as the end can restand multiple times, meaning you can potentially activate this unit's ability multiple times. So you could potentially swing in with a 40k rearguard with free crits, whilst your Vanguard is also swinging three times. But I think this card's main potential will shine in premium, because in premium we got all these wacky restanding strides like Ziegenberg or Dungit. But not only that, their main ability, their main gimmick is the Legion, the Cross, the Yen, triple restand Vanguard strategy. And this card can capitalize on that as well, because it's just like a the end in standard, but now in premium, which is even more power. But the reason why you can capitalize even more in premium is because of the Conroe Grade 1 that allows you to counter charge two times every time your Vanguard attacks. So basically what you can do is you attack with your Vanguard the first time, you counter charge two, then it restands, you activate a Burn Rise Dragon, and if you have two on the columns, you activate them both, so you counter blast two, you give them both plus 15k and a crit, then you attack with your Vanguard again, you counter charge twice again, then you restand, then you activate those abilities again. So they now both are 40k with free crits, and then you attack with your Vanguard again. And that's even without calculating triggers, and you're probably gonna run a lot of crits in that build as well. So that means not only is your Vanguard a threat, now you have rearguard side columns that can possibly threaten game. And if you happen to watch the World Championship livestream, you have seen this deck in action, and what you saw was that the opponent needed to PG the Vanguard three times, and they could take the rear guards. But with this new card, they can no longer take those rear guards, and they need to once again PG those columns as well. But most decks don't have more than four PGs, meaning it stops at that specific moment. So honestly, I think this is a very solid card for Kagero. Probably be more useful in premium, but might find its way in standard as well. Maybe add a two off or something just to have some nice rigor pressure whenever you need. And those are basically all the promos that were revealed within this special promo pack. I'm honestly very surprised that these promos are actually pretty damn useful as typically most promos are somewhat on a subpar level and aren't really that great as seen as with the Royal Panam promo or the Battle Sister promo, which isn't something new. It's Basically the same skill that we had, but with a different unit and a, 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 a little bit different flavor. But with these new promos that we got for Gear Chronicle, Kagero and DP, this is something else. So yeah, I'm honestly very surprised. I'm very excited about these promos. But now I want to know what you guys think of these new promos. So let me know in the comments down below what you think of these new promos. Are you excited about the potential that we're going to get these promos in maybe about two months? Let me know in the comments down below all your thoughts and opinions and let the discussion going. As always, this video has been brought to you by our lovely Patreons over patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider. If you do want to support the channel or everything that's happening on the channel, then head over to patreon.com slash Vanguard Insider and become a Patreon today. But with that said, I'm Mr. Time Leap, and I'll see you guys in the next one!